You hissing at me, buddy? Is that you look you looking at me? You want a piece of this? Huh? You want a piece of the owl bot? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not really doing anything to you. Hello everybody, Grace Steel Plays, and we're back with more Taito Ecology. No time for BS. Our biome is actually in a little bit of trouble here. So we need to do some things. Our Ditrius level is up to level three. So that tells me that we clearly need to put down some mushrooms and earthworms and other such things. Let's go ahead and do that right about now. Put one over here. And then we'll put another one, I don't know, kind of like over here. And then I'm probably just going to go ahead and put down like an earthworm over here as well, just in case. We'll go ahead and do that. Now we lost a lot of like moths and stuff I saw when I looked at this. All of our moth population is dying. So I'm curious... If that is because, oh, thank you, weekly income. I'm curious if that is because they're getting eaten by the different creatures or what. But that as it is, let's go ahead and put down a couple more moths. This because having those guys around is always good. Ah, our Dietrich level is going down. Excellent. That's what I like to see. Like I said, I've never actually, I don't think that we've ever had it get up to level 3 like that before. Usually, I'm pretty good at keeping it at level 1. Our biodome HP is going up nicely. So that's good. Um, the bisons are down. Let's go ahead and put some different animals out and such. I'd like to go ahead and get like some of these frogs out. And the frogs are going to need something to eat. So I'm actually going to put down another moth over here. Let's go ahead and put down a couple of... What else do I want to do? Let's go ahead and put down some ants too. Actually. We'll put those guys down like over here slightly. Haven't put down any ants for a while. Ooh, honeybees. I want to put down some honeybees as well. We could put these guys over here. That'll be nice. And let me see here. Some prairie dogs, antelopes. Oh, we don't have any antelopes up. That should be cool. Let's go put down some antelopes over here. I want to take a look at our different trees and things because I would like to get plenty of more grass and trees on our biome here now these the grass is actually so small that it's difficult to place so i have to get right up in there and put it down another sage bush over here put down some milkweed over here and i do probably need some larger trees as well let's go ahead and get one of these asters over here because I think everything likes to sn to snack on those. I don't think I can put those quite over there. Let's move out a little bit. Those bison are definitely roaming. They do say that the grasslands are where the, the buffalo roam. And these buffalo kind of do whatever they want, apparently. They, they'll go they'll go all the way down to the edge of the zone. Purple coneflower. We do have those eastern red cedars that we can still put down as well. And... We will probably do that. Want to get a couple more critters down, though. Maybe, like, some jackrabbits and stuff. Ooh, a deer mouse. I haven't put any of those guys down. I would put those... Those I can probably zoom out for, actually. Let's go ahead and do that. Those I can put right about maybe here. There we are. And I could even put more over here kind of start going this way now the game talks about like different animals and stuff like that getting out of hand with overpopulation i haven't really seen that yet i haven't seen like animals populating so much that they cause the ecosystem to collapse because of the sheer amount of population they have so i don't know if that's a thing or what but as of right now i'm gonna go ahead and say it is not a thing Look at the mouse. Look at the mice <laughs> dropping out of the sky here. That's so funny. There we go. Oh, little mice. Oh, it fell on the first guy there. It's like a little mouse ladder going on. Come on, guy. There you go. Move it right along. I know there's I know there's not too much to do yet in the... Uh... Is this guy sleeping standing up? Do antelope sleep standing up? Is this a thing? Does it say anything about this in the biodex? I didn't know about this. Oh, it's a pronghorn antelope. Is that different than our other antelope? They can run quickly, but they rarely jump obstacles more than a single meter high. This is one reason why human structures like fences can be so disruptive to pronghorns. Pronghorns will also compete for food with livestock like cows and sheep. 
And it doesn't really say anything about sleeping standing up. But if so, that's pretty dang funny. Uh, okay, back to the back to the plants here. I want to put down another cedar. Now we do have our massive tree over here. <laughs> if I knew we could only put down one, I probably would have put it down like closer to the middle of everything. Put this red cedar right about here. Yeah, there we go. That looks nice. Actually, getting the cedars going is probably going to be a good thing. I probably want to get as many of these on the field as possible. So, I'm going to go ahead and maybe let the the energy rack up a little bit. I'm going to put down one more cedar, and then we'll take a look at the cedars. I'd like to see what the biodex actually has to say about these guys. We almost have 80 energy here. We're going to have it in just a second. There it is. Go put down one more of these cedars right about here. Yeah, that looks nice. Let's go ahead and click on one of these biodexes. It says, herbivores enjoy eating the red cedar's plentiful berries. Birds are particularly fond of them. I still like to see some birds in the game. That's something I'm really looking forward to. I do hope they add that. The red cedar's branches provide cover and shelter for many small animals. Red cedars are prone to catch fire, <laughs> which can be helpful for prairie ecosystems. Oh, semi-frequent wildfires help to keep red cedar populations under control. However, in more urban areas, roadways and other human-made areas can prevent the natural progression of wildfires which often leads to the cedar populations booming out of control and making wildfires much worse in the long term. Huh. So to keep these guys under control, they actually need to burn them down every once in a while. That's something else. Who would have thought? Go ahead and put down some garter snakes. I know we have at least one garter snake over there, but I'm going to put down another one over here. And there's actually rattlesnakes that we can put down as well. Ooh. Go ahead and put down this rattlesnake here. There we are. I think I'm even going to get, like, more bison as well. I wonder, maybe if you get, like, enough of any one creature, they'll start to breed themselves. Just because I wonder if you can start to get to the point where the ecosystem, like, it's so balanced that it, like, balances itself, kind of, and you can just focus on growing it instead of just like making what you already have you know what i mean just because i spend time like we do get to expand our ecosystem but i spend a lot of time just growing and grow or uh redoing what we've done oh that is a loud growl <laughs> holy cow 93 percent hunger so he's doing just fine all these guys are probably okay as well i mean i've got plenty of plants around right how are the rabbits doing there, jackrabbit. Oh, we got some details there. Ooh, more Taito coins. Could always use those. Oh, the jackrabbits are having a great old time. They're doing just fine. I don't even know where they're... Here we go. I wasn't even sure where their environment was at. Did that just... Oh, because I... behind him is this... What the heck? Did that snake just hiss at me? You hissing at me, buddy? Is that... You, lo you looking at me? You want a piece of this? Huh? You want a piece of the owl bot? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not really doing anything to you. Okay. Back over here. We're good on energy. Let's put down some more bison. Dang it. Zoom on out. More bison. Let's get these bison kind of over here. Yes. Many, many of bison. Excellent. And obviously, we need to put down more mushrooms. Because mushrooms in the in the what am i what am i saying here the grasslands are super important i'm losing some more moths huh where are these guys at where are you guys going oh they're down they're over here wow there's only three of them left someone must be chewing on these guys i guess more plants especially things like the sand cherry hmm there we go sand cherry a little bit of that We'll go ahead and put down the honey mesquite because we know that all different types of antelopes and stuff love the honey mesquite. And I think I'm going to also focus on, put down one of these bushes too. I'm going to focus on the honeybees because the honeybees, if I can find them, there we are. The honeybees are a pollinator. We get a hundred of them for our cost instead of 20. I know I'm almost looking at this like uh, like building a magic deck or something like that. But we get a lot of them for very, very little cost. 
So I'm going to go ahead and put one of these guys down right about... Where do I want to put this? Right about here. Oh, I missed. Come on. Right about here. Come on now. Work with me, honeybees. Do, do as I command. Excellent. Put those honeybees right about there. This way they can kind of pollinate everything around. And there is a ton of honeybees. So I'm glad to see this. Let's go ahead and look at the honeybees real quick again. Honeybees are honeybees collect nectar from flowers. They ref, then refine and store it but in their beehives as honey. Honey sustains all the bees in the colony. Bees are often farmed by humans for their honey. Honeybees have stingers, which means that most animals avoid eating them as a snack. Some birds, however, have learned to eat around the bee stingers, and animals like badgers will eat bee larvae. Now, there's a whole bunch of other stuff here, like the social... I think this is a new tab. This might be a new tab, guys. I'm not sure if this was here before. Social life. Busy as a bee isn't a popular saying for nothing. In a beehive, everyone has a job to do. Some bees take care of the larvae, babies, while others gather nectar from flowers. Some bees spend their lives tending to the hive's queen bee, and the queen bee's job is to lay eggs that grow up into new workers for the hive. Ooh. Bees have some of the most important insects on Earth. They pollinate thousands of species of plant. Without bees, many plants would die out, which lead to mass food shortages, and in some cases, the collapse of the entire ecosystem. Well, thank you, bees. <laughs> keep, uh, keep doing what you do, because without you, apparently, we would all be dead. More grass. Now, we do have to kind of snug down here to get this grass going. Oh, yeah. More grandma grass, because if I remember correctly, everyone loves grandma grass. Just like grandma used to make old grandma grass here, if I can actually get it in a spot where it will take. This is another one of those grasses where if you move out, it's a little bit tough because you can't really see it that well. There we go. Excellent. More grass. All the grass. Because... We've got tons of buffaloes, and I know they'll be enjoying this grass. And I think I'm going to go ahead and actually put down one more buffalo. Because we have 90 energy, and I want to get a large amount of buffalo on the field. So let's put down one more right over here. Here we go. There we are. Now, the buffalo do use, like, almost all of our energy up. But they're cool. So I'm all right with it. Excellent. Yes. Yes, Buffalo. I don't know which of you are males and which of you are females. I think I think all these are males, aren't they? I'm not really sure exactly how it works for male and female Buffalo. Let's read a little bit about the Buffalo, come to think of it. Man, they sound like a dragon almost. Social life. Bison are a di di diurnal, diurnal yes, species. They spend their days grazing with the herd. Bison live in herds that can have dozens of individuals. Herds are generally separated into a group for females and calves and a group for males, though the two groups travel together. The giant hump on the bison's back is pure muscle. It gives the bison a super strong neck, which allows it to plow through the snow in the cold winter months. I actually did not know that. I didn't know that this is all just a giant muscle power thing. <laughs> How about the reproduction cycle for them? Dominant male bison will attempt to mate with all the females they can. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the mating season is the only time the male and the female or her groups will come together. The females give birth to one or two offspring, which they will nurse for seven to eight months. Holy cow. Male bison do not participate in raising the young. What a jerk. Comes in, fertilizes all the females, and then he's like, all right, guys, I'm done. Heading out. Heading out for the rest of the year. See ya. And that's it. Put down a couple more. Maybe I'll get some wolves down. Don't have any of those yet. And they do need to snack on various critters. In fact, we're going to put these guys kind of way over here, maybe. I don't want to put them right next to everything. There we go, wolves. Enjoy. Put down some prairie dogs, too. Can't have a prayer without some prairie dogs. There we go. Now, once we have enough energy, I will put down one more of these big old trees here, these eastern red cedars. I wonder what it has to say about prairie dogs. I really don't know that much about these guys. Oh, that is a very, very high-pitched squeal. 
we are getting much better on the diversity score, which is nice. All right, prairie dogs, tell me all about you. Prairie dogs are primarily herbivores, feeding on roots, leaves, grasses, and other green matter. They will occasionally consume insects. Okay. Prairie dogs need to keep a sharp eye out for predators. They make a great meal for badgers. Oh, man, badgers eat prairie dogs? Those bastards. Snakes, coyotes, and eagles, young are especially vulnerable. Only about half of the baby prairie dogs survive their first year. Wow. Prairie dogs never need to drink to take a drink of water. They get all the water they need from the food they eat. Huh. Okay, did not know that. That is new and exciting. All right, giant tree. Come here. Right about there with the red, with the red cedar. Need plenty of red cedars. And maybe, maybe I'll put down one more honeybee colony. A group of honeybees has low health. Holy crap. Didn't I just put those guys down? Or was there another honeybee I put down? Oh, it's probably these ones. No, those ones are fine. How about over here? Holy cow! They do have low health. What's been going on with these honeybees? They're getting the, they're getting the bejesus beaten out of them. Put down another honeybee over here. Holy, holy wow. Now, these cedars are pollinated, so that's excellent. 30 days until fruiting. I wonder if any of our cedars are actually fruiting. Uh, this one is, this cottonwood is flowering. Did I even manage to build anything that far over? I don't even think I did because of that, that dang, <laughs> that dang, uh, cotton cottonwood. That thing is so huge. Holy cow. All right. So they're all just kind of pollinated right now. Nothing's really fruiting, but they should be fruiting in the, in the future here. And when they do, I plan to be around for it. Let's put down a few more of these mesquites. There we go. And maybe another cornflower. Excellent. And what the heck, we'll get down like a couple more little creatures here. We'll put down some more jackrabbits, I think. Jackrabbits would be good. Maybe those guys will do some, some breeding. Could always use more jackrabbits. Now, we're starting to look a little bit more like a forest, like a traditional grasslands, but man, we got plenty of more to do. I will tell you that. And I may even, I may even, can I afford this? Yes, we can. I'm going to go ahead and unlock this. And the reason why is because that'll give us 250 energy to use next time. And oh man, guys, you know what? I can't. I can't just not use this little bit of energy that we've got left. So let's go and wait. No, oh, we don't even have to wait. I was going to say, let's wait to get a little bit more energy so I can put down one more red cedar. Plenty of cedars, boys. That's what we want. Hope you're enjoying Taito Ecology. This game is awesome. I love it so much. Just, it's only going to get more beautiful, I think. And as they add more plants and animals, there's so much that you can do with a nature game. I mean, there really is. And if you enjoy nature, then I think it's just a great game to play. Until the next time, stay foxy and much love.